Hello. So good to see you. So, so good to see you. I believe this is going to be a very, very impactful session. Um, trust in God. This is an aspect many of God's people have struggled with. And, um, now is your evening. How's your day been? So, so good to see you connect online uh, this evening. And wherever you are like for us to agree in prayers. Father, I want to thank you for such an amazing time we're going to have this evening. Thank you because we know that you will help our infirmities and you will help us. In every area of struggle, your children will receive light and help, particularly that there will be an impartation in the spirit of everyone, that there will be no struggle in the aspect of prayers and study of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, so good to see you, so good to have you, <laughs> sorry please, online this evening. I mean, this subject is, um, shall I say, four out of every five questions you hear believers ask, um, how do I become consistent with prayer? How do I become consistent with study of the word? How do I manage my time? and manage my spiritual life considering the nature of my job particularly for those in diaspora right where you have the system itself you know compels you to be busy around the clock because you have bills to pay so how do i manage everything and particularly as things get busier in ministry how do i become how do i manage the secret place how do i remain consistent with prayer and study of the word i mean Interesting. So I believe that um, somebody is going to be getting, if I can use the word, the hack. Yes, if I can use that word, permit me to use that word. All right. But not just the hack, but also the impartation in your spirit. All right. Necessary for you to, you know, function in that regard without any struggle. And you know what I found out? You honestly don't have to struggle. That's what I found out. You honestly don't have to struggle. We do not have to struggle. There is a body of knowledge, there is a body of wisdom available for us to, you know, walk in certain light, um, you know, of God's word. So we really do not have to study and um, to st um, struggle. Sorry. All right. So greetings to everyone. Greeting online, um, Pastor Maggie. Should be on your show shortly. Shortly, we should see. All right. So, <laughs> greetings to everyone. So, first and foremost, um, what does it mean to be consistent with prayer? Or what does it mean to be consistent? It's the state of um, repeating the same thing, um, but not necessarily repetition, but even in terms of improvement also. So, one who is consistent is one who is able to meet up again and again and again with allotted schedules you know so um you know what i found out about prayer um you are not enjoying the dividends of prayer if you are not consistent with it and that's the same thing i found out about study of god's word you are not really going to be enjoying the full dividends if you are not consistent all right so um some of the reasons I found that people, you know, complain about that, you know, has rendered them sometimes ineffective in that area. Um, they are not able to meet up for time, for jobs, for many reasons and all that. All right. So, um, but this evening, I'm telling you, if you will listen attentively, you will never have to struggle a day again in your life. And I'm telling you. You will never have to struggle a day again in your life. And I, I mean, I'm saying that with every sense of humility because I know God's word is powerful enough to bring liberation. Praise God. You know, so I believe one of the reasons why people struggle with prayer and study of the word is because the flesh automatically fights anything that exalts God. That's one of the principal reasons. Let's just face the fact. All right. The flesh wages war against anything all right that represent god look at what the bible says in galatians chapter number five galatians chapter number five all right let me start the reading all right galatians five let's read verse 17 
Well, let me start reading from verse 16 for the sake of you having an understanding. He said, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The word lust of the flesh there is also another word that means the desire. In fact, the Amplified Translation says, But I say, walk and live habitually. Habitually. The word habitual is from the word habit, which is a French word, all right? Habit, to dwell. That is, dwell. I say this, live habitually, dwell in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. I'm going to explain this. And you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh of human nature without God. All right. So what the Bible is saying here is that, all right, live in the Spirit, pitch your tent where you will dwell consistently in the Spirit, all right, then um, where you are responsive and controlled and guided by the Spirit. That is, let your heart be inclined or inclined at an angle where you can respond to the impulse of the Spirit, where you can be controlled by the desires of the Spirit, where you can, you know, be guided by the Spirit. He said, when this happens, you will not gratify, you will not fulfill the cravings of the and the desires of the flesh, that is, of your human nature without God. Now look at what verse 17 says, very powerful scripture. It says, the flesh lost against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Alright? Um, amplified, I love the way Amplified puts it again. It says that, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit. They are opposed to the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the spirit are opposed, alright, to the flesh. Godless human nature. For these are antagonistic, all right, to each other. These are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding in conflict with each other. So that you are not free, all right, so that you are not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. So we understand that the flesh is constantly waging war with the spirit, all right, and the spirit is constantly waging war with the flesh. Now, prayer mainly is an activity of the spirit all right prayer is an activity of the spirit so what the bible is saying here is that as long as you have set yourself to pray your flesh that is the human nature the godless human nature is going to try to fight you it's going to bring things sometimes sadness sometimes emotional issues and sometimes many things all right um and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm saying this for a fact that several times that I get up to pray, it is not convenient. I'm telling you. Sometimes you feel like um, just stopping. For those of us that have alarm that ring at several times of the day, you just feel like just snoozing it and so I can be busy doing this and all that. But you see, prayer requires discipline. All right? It requires discipline. I'm still going to go to this scripture mainly, but let me just quote it now. Romans 6 verse 16 says that, Know ye not. Romans 6 16 says, Know ye not. That whomsoever you yield yourself servant to obey, the servant you are to whom you obey. Whether of all right, sin unto death, of obedience unto life. You see that? So meaning that you can, it's a function of your ability to yield yourself. Whose side are you tilting to? You can yield yourself to the desires of the spirit, which is to pray, which is to study, which is to fellowship. And you can yield yourself to the desire of the flesh, which is a godless nature that wants to lead you into godlessness. So what the Bible is saying here is that no, none of the both really has the influence over you, per se, without your consent. So both the spirit and your flesh cannot directly rule you until you yield yourself. All right, until you yield yourself. In fact, Paul was speaking to the Galatians in Galatians 5.1. He said, now that you have been made free from the bondage of sin, he said, don't get yourself entangled again. All right, meaning that you can always earn back. I, I remember seeing a video, was it on Twitter or on YouTube? I saw a video of a ram that was rescued from a ditch or a sheep or a goat, whatever, that was rescued from a ditch and it ran back inside. You see, so you have the responsibility. Sometimes you go for certain meetings and you are fired up. Man, you feel like, my God, I'm going to go and blast in tongues for three hours and all that. 
You see, that's the desire of the Spirit. He's been fueled by staying in the atmosphere of God's presence. Now, it is now your own core responsibility to sustain that spiritual drive. It's like a wave. You see, it's like the wave of a sea. That's every man of the Spirit should understand this. It's like the wave of a sea. You don't, you don't create it, but once you see the wave, in fact, you don't create it as a body of truth at a level. All right, but I can show you. I'm going to show you as we go on that you can actually have an atmosphere where the wave is constantly created. But your duty is to take advantage of that steering and make sure you know you ride on it. That's how to build. Praise God. So, one of the major reasons why people struggle is because the struggle is from within. You have your flesh, the nature of the flesh, that is fighting the nature of the spirit that is fighting the activity of the spirit that is fighting what god is trying to do in your spirit that is fighting the fellowship in your spirit that is fighting um the routine being built it is fighting it all right but it's your core responsibility to determine whose side you belong by yielding yourself by giving yourself that's what yield to give yourself so if you give yourself to the activity of the spirit then you become more spiritual if you give yourself to the activity of the flesh then you become more fleshy or carnal you see um, the devil you are you are right and the rem, in the realm where the devil can always manipulate you manipulate your will manipulate your emotions and manipulate your thoughts are you following what i'm saying there so it's our core responsibility to choose to yield to the spirit it's our core responsibility to choose to yield to the dictate of the spirit you see consistent prayer life is not automatic it is built it is built it is built now i want to you know um read a few things here so you can understand um now you must understand that the devil doesn't want you to pray yeah the devil does not want you to pray and while you are listening I'd like for you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Just click on the subscription button, then hit that notification so that you can always get videos that will inspire you, that will grow you and help you mature. All right, so I look forward to seeing you do that. Hit the subscription button and then hit the notification button and you can drop comment so I can personally, you know, read from you and, you know, learn from you also. Praise God. So the devil doesn't want you to pray. So there are forces in the atmosphere. There are forces, there are demonic forces, and you have to understand this. We are, we are in a world that is not innocent. We are in a, in a world that there are forces in the air. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 from verse 3, says that for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. It says in verse 4, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting out imagination, and every high thing that lifts itself against the knowledge of God. So you must understand that there are forces, all right, demonic forces, that wants to take control of your heart. They want to take control of your mind. So they keep lifting themselves, creating occasions, creating a venue where it will be almost impossible for you to do any spiritual thing. In fact, the devil wants to bring you into a situation where it is not possible for you to be spiritual. And you must understand that. So, spirituality and um, prayer, having a very good, formidable prayer life, is actually a fight. You've got to fight for it. And I'm, I want to make this as plain as possible. You will really have to fight for it. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I get up to pray, and for the first 30 minutes, um, it's like I'm struggling but I don't quit. You don't quit because it feels like you're struggling. You pray till you break through. Till you break through in the place of prayer. Till you break through. And the point of breakthrough is the point where it is now no longer you that prays, but the Spirit of God is praying through you. All right, now you are praying by the Spirit. You are praying by the anointing. So the point of struggle is the point where there are forces in your mind, thoughts of your flesh, tiredness, and different things and all that. But you don't quit. You, you stay till you break through. And let me say this to you. It doesn't matter what you have mastered. If you have not mastered prayer and study of the Word, you have not mastered anything sustainable. You've got to understand that. That's our core cause. Men ought always to pray. 
and not to faint. This parable Jesus told them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, listen, don't go away. I'm still going to show you the dangers of prayerlessness. All right, the dangers of prayerlessness. I mean, it can be very, very dangerous. And some people have lost their lives and lost their callings. And some uh, your Bible says that the gift and the calling is to have repentance, but the man who is called can lose relevance because they fail to keep their spirit aglow daily. They fail to charge up their spirit. They became prone to the things they preached against. They became prone to the things they have cast out. The same demons they've casted out began to influence their minds. Are you following what I'm saying now? So you must understand that spirituality is a warfare. It's a warfare. I, I need you to understand that foundation. It's a warfare. You practically have to master the art of war. You've got to master it. It's a warfare. You are to war with unseen forces, spirits from dark worlds, trying to insist that they bring you down at all costs. And they fight through your mind, fight through your thoughts, fight through your environment. I remember there was a time, all right, there was a year, I went to eat um, in a restaurant on OAU campus. I was eating, they called that place Fox and Fingers. And I was eating there, and they were playing a song on the screen. And when I look at the song, I mean, I, ladies were dancing almost naked. I just turned my back towards the screen, you know. And then I, I, I saw another brother in front of me, a Christian brother that we, I know him. We were together in the same church. And he, when he saw what I did, I saw he, he, he also did that. And we just gave ourselves thumbs up. Why? You are trying to prevent occasion where the devil will sow a seed in your heart. And at the time you ought to be praying, or rather that's the time the seed, true thought, will now begin to germinate. Are you following what I'm saying now? Now, I want you to understand that spirituality is a warfare. You practically have to fight for it. Let me say that loud and clear. You have to fight for it. And one of the best ways to master consistency in a place of prayer is to pray. You can never be consistent if you don't have a consistent schedule. That's the first place to start from. You've got to, that discipline of being, all right, fixed to this schedule, like for instance, between 10 and 12, I'm going to be praying. Or between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., I'm going to be praying. Or between 4 a.m., all right, and 6 a.m., I'm going to be praying. And making sure that you stay with it. So sometimes people say, you know, I've been struggling with prayer. And you ask them, when do you pray? Say, eh, actually, I pray when I feel like. No, you won't pray. <laughs> you won't pray. You won't pray like that. Are you following what I'm saying? All right? So you must understand that. It's a warfare. It's a warfare, practically. It's a warfare, practically. And you have to fight that good fight. The Bible called it the good fight. So you have to fight the good fight. The devil doesn't want you to pray. Now I wrote here that your emotions will not always support prayer and study. Your emotions will not always support prayer and study. There will be days you don't feel like. All right, But that you don't feel like doesn't mean you won't. That's where we understand the difference between men and boys. So you must understand that this is an activity that requires discipline. So for instance, when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like having your bath, do you just go out and wear your suit and not your tie and go to work without having your bath? No, the fact that you don't feel like doesn't mean, all right, you won't do it. You have to do it because it's necessary, it's needed, all right? It's mandatory. Now, when you see prayer as a caucus, then you understand that it's not subjected to feelings. When you see study of God's word as a caucus, you understand that it cannot be subjected to feelings. Just like when you were on campus, and for those of you who are on campus, you can't feel like not going for lecture. Even if you feel like, you understand that if you are not going to fail, you have to get up and go. Are you following what I'm saying here? You have to get up and go. It's not subjected to feelings. And I, I, I once heard one of the fathers in the body of Christ, I can't remember who, he said, when you don't feel like praying, you pray till you feel like praying. You see, sometimes people come to meet me and then say, uh, Pastor, you know, I've been struggling with prayer. How can I master the heart of praying consistently? And most times I, I always think, I, you know, I think to myself, all right, are you sure you really want the truth? Somebody say, I don't know how to, I've not been praying well. How do I master the art of consistency? Are you sure you want the truth? You know the truth? The truth is start praying. The way to deal with prayerlessness is to pray. <laughs> Amen. That's the way to deal with prayerlessness. The way to deal with tiredness around study of the word, 
and lack of will and desire to study the word is to begin to study. And listen, you must learn to bind, bound yourself with certain codes of a routine that, you know, I, I've said this while teaching pastors, that if the structure does not hold you, it is not a structure. It must be a structure that, you know, that holds you yourself. So you can't decide that there are cheat days. You can't have cheat days with prayers. Right? The same way people who have feet farm, people who are doing feet farm, and I say, this is my cheat day, I'm taking burger today, I'm just taking coke. And no, no, they are not cheat days. Sometimes you are consuming calories that will take you two weeks to burn. Are you following what I'm saying? You can't have cheat days with prayer. You have to pray. You can't have cheat days with study of the word. You have to study the word. All right? So you can bound yourself or bind yourself with certain codes of routine, like no breakfast, um, no study, no breakfast. All right? No study, no sleep. No prayer, no breakfast. No prayer, no sleep. And make sure you are not the only one that knows that code. So there can be people around you that can hold you to account. Your roommate, for instance, for those of you who have roommates. All right? Your spouse, for those of you who are married. Are you following what I'm saying now? So you build codes intentionally. Intentionally. You have to be intentional about it. Then you have to be committed to it. Without commitment, you are not going to go anywhere with any activity. I'm telling you. With, in fact, let's, without the, let's leave the pray, issue of prayer and study aside. All right? I've, I've seen that the issue of commitment is a general thing. Okay? If you are not committed to prayer and study, if you check, you will discover that there are many other things that you are also not committed to. Praise God. So it begins, it's, it's an activity that requires discipline. You need to have schedule. You need to, and then you need to have alarm that reminds you to pray. You need to have structures that reminds you to pray. You need to have structures that reminds you to pray. You need to have structures that reminds you to pray. All right? So when you put these things in place, you will discover that the activity becomes a lot easier becomes a lot easier so your emotions your flesh will not always feel like praying but you've got to build a level of discipline all right that can say no to what the flesh is demanding for praise god all right now let me say this to you one of the one of the principal tools that the devil used to distract people from the place of prayer is distraction distraction all right somebody's saying uh, so i'm going to pray now from 12 um, p.m. till 2 a.m. Then just at the time you ought to start prayer, then you remember, let me just check um, for any notification on Instagram. Then you go Instagram, check in. Oh, wow. So, so, so fellow followed me back. Oh, wow, I'm so grateful. Oh, wow. Let me check her status. Let me check this. One hour, you're still there. Because you see, when it's an activity that gratifies the flesh, it is sweet to the flesh. But you have to build to the point that the same pleasure the flesh enjoy when you are gratifying the flesh, you begin to enjoy the same pleasure in doing the things of the Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? You begin to enjoy, have the same pleasure. I'm telling you, practically, if I've not done the things I ought to do, it's like I want to explode. I'm craving for that time like a man whose head wants to explode. Because the culture has been built over time, has been built with time. So you've got to understand that principle. The devil is going to try to fight you with distraction. And the distraction will be around the areas you have not mastered discipline before. You see? The things you have not learned to be disciplined on, like um, social media, um, movies, um, sometimes many things around you. So it's going to, I mean, it's going to keep those things as cards that they will use against you the days you want to be consistent or the days you want to be committed. So you must understand that. Um, the same way as a student, you set time, this time for lecture, and you have to go for a lecture, this time for exam, you have to put other things aside. You've got to understand, you don't pray with your spare time. You make time for prayer. You don't, you don't study with the time you have left. You actually make out time for study. You don't say, once I'm done with everything, then I'll check the time I have left. I'm going to study. No, no, you make out time. You make out time. You make out time for it. You create time for it. You create time for it. You, you intentionally, you, you make it top of your priority. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because it is important. 
Now, first and foremost, why do we pray? Before I begin to show you how to build that consistency. Why do we pray? We pray because, and why do we pray? We pray because prayer is our primary way of communicating with God. Why do we study? Because that's the primary way God speaks to us. That's the primary way. There is see to prep yourself. Now listen to this. And many people have gotten into error because of lack of this basic understanding. To prep yourself for the still small voice or the audible voice of God's spirit as a way to speak to you without having understanding of scripture is to make yourself vulnerable to familiar spirit. Is to make yourself vulnerable to forces of the environment. They will speak to you with the voice of your lost and you will say yes Lord. You see the devil can speak to you and you answer and say yes Lord. Because he's speaking with the voice of your lost. So you must understand that anything you will hear as Rema will always fit within the circumference of scriptures. The, the, the scripture is the line of demarcation of what is accurate in terms of activity in the spirit realm. So you want to first make yourself grounded in that. You want to first make yourself established in the light of scriptures. You want to first make yourself established in that. Are you following what I'm saying here? So you understand that there is no situation you find yourself. God has a word for you in scriptures. He has a message for you. And I'm, I'm telling you this, if you are struggling with any form of addiction, try it. No addiction can overpower a devotional life that is consistent. Quote me anywhere. No addiction can overpower a devotional life that is consistent. And by that I mean consistently studying and consistently praying. You know, I, I went for a meeting somewhere. I don't want to mention the name of the place. And after the meeting, I mean, God moved powerfully in that meeting. Signs and wonders. I mean, people were imparted and baptized in the Holy Ghost. A lady watched me from the crowd and came behind close to the altar and jumped on me from the back and jumped, almost broke my neck. And what did she want? She wants to be imparted. She wanted the secret of the anointing. And I've seen people make this mistake. You go to minister in places, they start following you. And please, apostle, what's the secret of this anointing? Well, the secret is simple. Read your Bible, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. As simple as this is, we miss it. Sometimes you want to hear one secret like, I wake up around 12 and I turn to the east. No, it's simple. You know, I have, I have people that inspire me. And one of the people that inspires me so much is Dr. Mensa Otavio. As one of the men, that one of the, he inspires me so much. I listen to him and I'm like, my God, what is this? And I've always said it. With the same ingredients, we'll make the same soup. Read your Bible, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. As simple as that is, if you miss it, I mean, spiritually, you will run dry. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? So that's God's primary way of communicating with you. So you must understand that every attempt of the enemy to stop you from praying is like a plane that is already flying, losing contact with the control tower. Now, I, I, I mean, I've, I've flown several times in my life. I mean, Practically, I'm always, you know, one place to another and all that. And sometimes I notice when the plane is about to take off, you notice the pilot will wait. And the first time that happened, I was wondering, why is he waiting? All right, only for me to discover in just two, three minutes, you will discover a plane is actually about to land through that runway. All right, so connection to the control tower helps the pilot to avoid, all right, crash to avoid accident. In fact, planes can collide in the air if there's no connection to the control tower. So they are controlling them and saying you fly at certain altitude, then you at certain altitude, at certain altitude, thousands of planes are in the air at the same time. So I understand that I will not be effective and there's no way I will finish well in the race of destiny, all right, if um, I will take off and lose touch with the control tower. And that's why Peter said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 6, he said, it is not a reason for us to leave the world and serve our tables. It doesn't make sense for us to leave the primary thing. He said, it's not a reason for us to leave the world and serve our tables. He said, let's look for amongst us seven men of honest report that we can appoint as head over these things. He said, but we, and this is where you should be. He said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer. 
we we'll give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves. It is not like prayer will just jump on them. We by ourselves will give ourselves to it. We will build the character. We will build the lifestyle. We will give ourselves. The same way you can give yourself to watching movies. The same way you can give yourself to seeing, um, to watching balls, um, to watching football. You can give yourselves to prayer. You can give yourself to the ministry of the world. We will give ourselves. I'm going to become more committed. Are you following me now? So, without prayer and study of the world, you are, you are going to crash. Many believers are suffering from burnout. I, I mean, I, I, I saw in the news today, a military officer, it happened also uh, last week or so, um, somehow something happened in the camp, started shooting other soldiers, and then sometimes you hear they kill themselves. PTSD. All right, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. People are struggling for it in the military and different other. In fact, there are many people in Nigeria, other part of are struggling from it. The same way many people are struggling from burnout and they are not aware. And let me show you some signs of burnout. Let, if I, I'm going to list a few things. If you can see these things in your life, then it's time to go on the retreat. Number one, one of the first signs of burnout is anxiety. All of a sudden, you start becoming anxious. And how will these things be? How is this going to happen? And eh, this, this, I've not done this. How will that happen? How will this, this? Anxiety. It's a sign that you are losing touch with God. Because once you are in touch with God, one of the things that will happen is that you will enter into a rest. You will be rest assured that God is in charge. You will practically see him at work. Another sign of burnout is loss of joy. Loss of joy or depression. Loss of joy. Sometimes it's not necessarily depression, all right, as the case may be in, all right, that yet. But that this fellow is just not joyful every time, all sad and worried and all that. It's a sign. You cannot be in tune with God and not see what he's doing. And you cannot see what he's doing and be sad. Psalm 2, the Bible says, that why do the hidden rage, the kings of the earth gather themselves uh, right, together and take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us come, break their bands, and cast their cords asunder. But he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. Joy is so powerful, we underrate it. The Bible says that it is with joy that we draw from the wells of salvation. Joy is so powerful. Joy is so powerful. Many believers don't know how powerful it is. And listen to this. Once you are not joyful, once you have lost the oil of joy, you are going to make decisions that will negate the God's plan for you. I'm telling you. Sometimes you break out of certain environment and certain individuals because the devil came in through loss of joy. And some of us have not understood this. It came in because of loss of joy. Another sign of burnout is fear. All of a sudden, you now become afraid. Afraid, fearful, you're afraid of the unknown, you're afraid of tomorrow, you're afraid of having certain sickness, of having certain things. You see, it is a sign you are not completely saturated. In fact, fear is so serious, if you ever note it in your life, go on a retreat. You can't be fearful. Job said what I fear, the most has finally come upon me. So he was actually nursing a baby called fear, and the devil saw it. The devil said, if I can touch him in the area of his fears, he will deny you. The devil says, say, this guy, if I can't, you cannot deny it. Another, the fourth sign of burnout is lost. All of a sudden, you start observing that certain individuals that you should not have any feelings in their direction. You start feeling towards them. And I'm telling you, it is a sign that you are burning out. You've got to go on serious prayer. Lost. Lost of the flesh, lost of the eyes. All right? Um, you start having feelings towards people that you should not have feelings for. You start uh, lusting after sometimes material things. Lost. And many people are struggling with it. It's like running with a bullet. Stop and be treated. Stop and be helped. Are you following what I'm saying now? Stop and be helped. Now, listen, I, I mean, I found myself in a situation where I, I just began to discover that my heart was having feelings. What nonsense? What? It's time to shut down on everything now. Because you can't run with that. I shared the story years back, about 13 years ago. All right? Privileged to lead a youth church. And I started discovering that my feelings were tuning towards a sister whenever she's not in church. And this didn't look godly. 
and I had to go and pray, and God helped me. The reason why many people feel they are not getting help from God is because you are not taking everything to God in prayer. I don't know why you feel... God. Let me say this, point blank. God is not your earthly father. He's not going to judge you. He's not going to condemn you. When you come to him, what you get is help. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore, let me start from verse 15. Hebrews 4, verse 15. Hebrews 4, 15. It says that, For we have not an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, seeing that he was in all point tempted like we are, and yet without sin. Now verse 16 says, Let us now therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help in times of need. So when you come to the throne of grace, you find you obtain mercy. You obtain mercy. Then you find help. You find help against every infirmity you may be running with. You find help. It's so real that you can practically cry to Abba and say, I'm, uh, this is happening to me. I need help. And you get help. Those situations, you are not getting help because you are not crying to God about them. I'm telling you, you've got to learn to cry to God about them. All right, lost. And once lost, once you begin to nurture lost, it's going to lead to different things. It's going to lead to immorality. It's going to lead to... I'm telling you, don't nurse that lust. It can lead to many things. Are you following what I'm saying now? Now, this is another sign of burnout. You start noticing competitive spirit. You start noticing that when God is doing something with your neighbor that it seems not to be happening with you, you start getting almost angry. Sometimes you say, I'm not angry, I'm not angry. But, uh, uh, but I think I'm better in this area. That's competitive spirit. That's competitive spirit. It is a sign that because once you are in tune with God, you will understand your assignment and his purpose. The reason why he has strategically placed you where he has placed you. Are you following what I'm saying here? All right. Competitive is another sign of burnout. Competitive spirit. Competition. Competition. You start becoming competitive. And once that happens, you are going to wander out of your own primary purpose and you start doing another man's job. Are you following what I'm saying? And we can go on and on and on and on and on. But you can avoid burnout. You can avoid burnout. I'm telling you, you can avoid it. Now, one of the ways to avoid burnout is not to wait till your battery has crashed before you charge. Don't wait. All right? Don't wait till your battery has crashed before you charge. All right? I'm going to show you a few more things, but let me show you this scripture. Leviticus chapter number 6. Leviticus chapter number 6. Now, this is a very interesting scripture that you... And you've got to go and download my teaching, all right, on how to... Don't lose your fire. Don't lose your fire. Download my teaching on Don't Lose Your Fire. Now, Leviticus chapter number 6. Now, let me start the reading from verse... Um, should I start from verse... Let me start the reading from verse 12. Now, I say, And the fire... Leviticus 6 from verse 12. Say, And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering on, in order upon it, and he shall burn there on the fat and peace offering. Let me explain this scripture. What the Bible is saying is that the fire should not go out from your altar. Now, but there's also a code here. For the fire not to go out, the priest, you must take on your priesthood seriously. The priest must burn wood every morning, every day. Must burn wood every day. All right? Must burn wood every day. Now, what is wood? Wood signifies anything that supports burning. Let me come again. Wood signifies anything that supports burning. So, let me explain this. And I, I want you to listen to this. All right? Um, listen to this now. Sometimes, some people just... They've been doing everything they want to do, watching movies, playing about, and all those things. And they say, tonight I'm going to pray for three hours. And you wonder why it's never happening. I'm going to explain. Um, I would have loved to use the concept of marriage to explain. For instance, if you want to have a peaceful home, you must understand that you cannot decide that by 12 o'clock in the afternoon, there's going to be peace. You see, by 12 o'clock, there's going to be peace today, and there's going to be peace in my home. I'm going to make sure there's peace. No, you don't have a peaceful home like that. You will have a peaceful home by being peaceful every moment at a time. One moment at a time. Every now and then. You are going to be on fire by learning to add what keeps you burning every now and then. That per minute, per hour, per second burning is what many people don't understand. <clears throat> that is, if I want to pray for three hours into the night, 
it means I must have been prepping my spirit by I call these things boosters. When I wake up in the morning, as I'm going to start praying, the first thing I do is to put on a message. Then I'm going to be praying. I quickly put on a message and I'm listening to it. As I'm praying, I'm also being recharged. Because the way I got trained, the way, the way by the grace of God I trained myself, all right, is to listen to message. As I'm listening to, right, if you have not mastered it, it may be difficult for you. As I'm listening to message, I'm studying. As I'm studying, all right, I, I, I feel like I say it. I'm also praying. So because I just want to maximize every moment. Are you following what I'm saying here? And that's why I always need undivided attention to do this. So you've got to understand to hard things that keep you burning. See, you must understand that. You cannot keep messages away and keep worship away and then think you are going to burn and study and pray. It won't happen though. You may never master it. So you've got to surround yourself, your television set, your, your phones, with messages, songs, worships, instrumentals, things that are instrumental to your growth and to your burning, that you, you create an atmosphere of possibility for spiritual activity. Not like the atmosphere you are playing Jaru and playing all those 50 cents and then you just say, oh, now just shut it down. You are going to struggle because you've already, it's like you have wet your altar with water. But what you need to have is wood every morning. Wood. Boosters. There are many people that when you begin to play, it's like fire is burning in your heart. So you've got to learn it. Are you struggling with prayer daily? You are struggling with the word. Start with this ark. Learn to have boosters. Surround yourself with it. Get earphones. Plug in those things. Learn to be born in with them. You see, I like to fly. One of the reasons why I like to fly is because at that moment, nobody can call me. No call can come in. Nobody is this. And oh my God, I just plug myself in and spend time. Are you following what I'm saying here? So you've got to understand it. Oh, you want to spend more time in fellowship? You want to be able to do this? Then add boosters, add boosters, add boosters, add boosters. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of, make sure you've set your environment in such a way that anything that contradicts, all right, walking in holiness does not enter into the atmosphere. Both in words, in action, and all that. Everything is controlled. You must understand this. There's no shortcut. Make sure everything is controlled. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. And I'm telling you, once you begin to master the art of prayer, you will begin to hear God. In fact, once you master prayer, scripture will come alive. I'm telling you. See, you want to study God's word. Pray in tongues for about an hour or so. Scriptures will come alive. You're going to be surprised as you are studying different revelations jump at you. You know, I remember when myself and my wife got married. <laughs> my, wife, my wife came to meet me one time and said, how do you study? What is this? We are reading the same Bible. What are you seeing? Because there is an altar of prayer. And you see, Another thing I would have loved to talk about is the practice of stillness. Um, and, uh, maybe for another day I'm going to talk about that. Many believers have not learned how to be still and know that is God. That stillness where you can travel. Now I'm not listening to this, listen to what I'm saying here. In the book of Psalms, 100, Psalms 119 verse 99 it says, I know better than my teachers because your commandment are my meditation. Verse 100 says, I know better than the ancients because I meditate in your statutes. So I'm talking about meditation on God's word. Are you following what I'm saying? And you are still. And God is speaking with you. And you must not. These things can be built. They can be built. They can be built. Are you following what I'm saying now? So you've got to understand. Learn to have boosters. I can list ministers that are boosters for me. I'm telling you boosters and what i do is that I, I i i know by the spirit as i'm entering each season that this is someone i must pay attention to in this season there was a time god spoke to me he said in this season do again so what i do in fact my wife was asking me say how do you play the same message around the clock the same message again and again it's called detoxification it's a warfare it must go beyond my head it must go beyond my mind it must enter my spirit so I play around the clock, around the clock. As I'm done, it's playing again. As I'm done, it's playing again and again till I embody it. First John 1, 1 of the word which, that which we, have, we have, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, which we have heard, which our hands have handled. We have lambano. 
the word of life. Are you following what I'm saying here? So you must understand that. Hey, it's a warfare. I'm telling you, you have to fight for it. And say to make your fight easy. Don't 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 make your things complex. To make it easy, create an atmosphere that supports burning. Create an atmosphere that supports burning. That's how to make it easy. Create an atmosphere that supports burning. Let there be words, everything. And that's why as a Christian, you cannot be following around people on social media. People who, I mean, I, I, I'm telling you. And that's why you, you just can't reach me. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this to be proud or something. I mean, I'm so careful what I see and what I, you know, what I look at. People will upload status, except for those who are sons and daughters or those who are very close. I don't, I don't like to. Anything that will make God want to avoid it. You see, be careful of the way the devil extinguish your fire with environment voice of discouragement. I heard the story from Lester somewhere. As a young man, we went to see um, Smith Wigglesworth and it was about entering into the house of Smith Wigglesworth with a newspaper. And as he got to the door, Smith Wigglesworth said, drop that at the door, drop that at the door. Don't enter my house with a lie. And he dropped it. And when he entered the house of Smith Wigglesworth, one of the things Smith Wigglesworth did to him was that he was reading the Bible out loud. He just made him sit down. I was reading the Bible out loud. Now we do this for our one-year-old daughter. All right, we do this for her. My wife just carry her and then begin, and I hold her down. Yeah, sit down. Then we begin to read the Bible. Yes, you say she doesn't understand, but something is entering the spirit. Something is entering. We are laying a foundation carefully. Something is entering that spirit. Oh, and this is what the Bible says in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter number two, and they were all gathered together in one accord. She wants to escape. I hold her down. Sit down. It must be entering your spirit. That's how to build a structure. That's how to build a structure. Make sure everything around you is, you have life entering. See, by the time you have learned to have structures where life is entering from one angle to the other, I mean correct life. You want to go six hours, you go effortlessly. Because your spirit man has been prepped, has been gymmed for it. Your spirit man has been prepared for that task, has been made ready, has been fired up for that task. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, there's a, there's a scripture I would like for you to see. Now, I, this scripture is very, very serious. It is so intense that if you have not found reasons to pray and study, this is the scripture you need to see. It is so intense. Amen. Look at it. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse 14. Proverbs 18, 14. I like that scripture on the screen. Proverbs 18, 14. Now the Bible says, the spirit of a man will sustain, look at this, his infirmity. Hey, this is a very serious word. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken, a wounded spirit who can bear. Let me explain. The spirit of a man, so the design of God, the intention of God is that the, if evil day comes, if certain things are happening, the intention of God is that the spirit of a man should, it's like the, the, the muscles, when you go to gym, your, the muscles that have been flat, they start popping up. Your spirit man has elastic abilities. Alright, as you study and pray, you are gymming your spirit, you are growing your spirit. If you so grow your spirit so well, in the day of your infirmity, your spirit can practically bear it. I've said this to you, I've been sick before, that I was placed on oxygen and all that. But by the revelation of God's word in my spirit, nobody needed to come lay hands on me. I got out. And you need to understand this. Your spirit is supposed to sustain you. And that's why sometimes people are preaching and they are teaching others, if you are not eating the word, you may become sick of the same things you have healed people from. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, imagine if my one-year-old daughter wants to carry me. She can't because her bones are not that strong to bear my weight. That's the reason why some believers are crashing. Some have made wrong mistakes, destiny mistakes. They've made mistakes. They've, they've, they've done certain things wrongly because in those days, they've not built a spirit that can carry them. So they crack and they make certain mistakes. And they, 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 some wonder of God's plan, some wonder of God's purpose. 
Because their spirit has not been built to carry it. So when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays. It is your spirit that is praying. It is your spirit that is praying. It is your spirit that is praying. Your spirit is praying. All right. Um, now look at it. Jude verse 20. It says, But ye beloved, building up your most holy faith, pray yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'd like to read another rendition of that Jude verse 20. Look at another rendition. All right. Another rendition of that. Jude verse 20. You've got to understand this. Now look at it. I'm going to read Amplified Translation. He said, but you, beloved, build yourself founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice. Higher and higher. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Let me give you something. I'm going to tell you this. As I begin to pray in tongues, I begin to I begin to rise above the fence, the walls of limitations of this flesh. I begin to rise above the fence. And what happens is that I begin to see the other side. I begin to see the things that God has made ready. As, I, as that begins to happen, I cannot be anxious. Because as I pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm seeing what is written in the script. I am seeing tomorrow. I'm seeing what God has settled concerning me. That's why we pray in the Holy Ghost. You will rise like an edifice. You will rise higher and higher and higher. You keep rising. And you want to make this a practice. Let me say this to you. And I can tell you this for a fact. Spiritual activities are more addicting than activities of the flesh. Quote me anywhere. The reason you don't know so is because you've not done it long enough. You've not done it will get to a point where practically you are running to your prayer to pray like you know the same way somebody a child you are beating is running you are running practically uh, why, why are you running because i need I'm, I'm going all right it's almost two i need to go and pray and they are wondering what's happening because you built it so you must understand that a very good prayer life and study life is built is built with time and dedication is built with time and dedication now why do we pray we pray because that is what sharpens our edges spiritually. That is what sharpens our edges spiritually. All right, I once heard the story of these two lumberjacks, or this lumberjacks, those are those who cut trees in the wood. The old guy and the young guy. And one day the young guy challenged the old man and said, Let's check. People have been saying you are the best, but I know I have strength. I'm better than you. You are old now. I want us to have a competition and let's check for who can cut the highest number of trees in a day. All right, so they agreed. And the whole village gathered. And the young man was cutting and cutting and cutting. And every time the old man cut a tree, he goes to sit. But the young man kept cutting throughout the day. Each time the old man cuts a tree, he goes to sit. At the end of the day, when they were counting the number of trees they've cut, they discovered that the old man that was going to sit down actually cut more trees than the young guy. And the young man protested. He said, this can't be. This can't be. I mean, I was watching him. He was sitting down. I wasn't sitting. And the old man said, I wasn't sitting. Each time I go to sit, I was sharpening my hacks. I was sharpening the hacks. I was sharpening the hacks. You see, activity is not necessarily spirituality. Some people are performing activity with blunt hacks. With blunt hacks. So people are performing activities with blunt acts. You've got to understand that. You, you want to stay aglow, sharpen yourself. Keep sharpening the acts. And for those of you who are in ministry, you don't want to function with the dull acts. You've got to sharpen daily, every day, fresh and consistent. Have you noticed the reason why when you taste Coke today, it doesn't taste better today than it was yesterday, or taste better yesterday than it is today? No, it doesn't. Because they've mastered the ingredient. If you notice that it, sometimes it's like you are hot and you are sharp, and some other times like they don't know what's happening to you, it's because you have not entered into mastery. You've not gained mastery. And any man who strives for mastery cannot be entangled with civilian affair. So you must understand, prayer helps you to sharpen your, your hedge. You will not be able to use your cutting hedge if you are not praying. As a matter of fact, you can never fulfill ministry or your assignment if you are not praying. You will soon leave what you are doing for another man's job. And you'll be prone to many things you ought not to be prone to if you're not praying. I've said this to you. If you have a misunderstanding with someone, and the person is someone who fellowship with God and you are not fellowshiping with God, you notice maybe for discouragement for many things, you have stopped. Don't bother checking who is right or wrong. You are wrong. 
Because that which empowers wisdom, you've not been fellowshipping with it. So it's very most likely that you are, I'm not saying automatically, get what I'm saying now. What I'm saying is that there is a higher chance that you are the one who is wrong. Now, why should we, why should we pray and study? All right, we need to do this because we are at war with unseen forces. It is in the place of prayer we subdue them. In the place of study that we understand their strategy and how we ought to operate. We are at war with unseen forces. And we've got to pray. So as we pray, we bring them to subject, into, into, sorry, into subjection. We bring them into captivity. We bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. We pull down strongholds. We insist that this is what must happen. Now sometimes I've seen people come to me and say, I just love your ministry. I love the way you do it with ease. And I, <laughs> I'm not trying to make boast, but you've got to understand there are many things happening behind the veil. There are many things happening behind the veil. There are many things happening behind the veil. Some of us probably don't like to talk about those things, but you've got to understand. You've got to understand. You've got to understand. One of the practices that has helped me, that I've learned to help me, is the culture of fasting daily. So there is a perpetual structure of no breakfast. It's not something I'm thinking about. Are you following up? Maybe, maybe on a few, I can count practically the number of days in a year. In fact, it is rare. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because a culture needs to be built. It's discipline. It's not easy on the flesh. So you know what happens now? If I, if any, by any means, I take breakfast or something, probably earlier, maybe I take around one or two. I feel so guilty. Because a lifestyle has been built. You must understand that. So prayer sharpens your head spiritually. We pray to, because we are at war. We are in a warfare. We are in a warfare. And that is how we bring down every thought. That's how we subject the enemy to captivity. That's how we overcome. That's how we overcome. And let me say this to you. That one of the most powerful things that happens when you study is that God is building structures within you. That when the enemy begins to throw jabs and arrows, You've been built strong. When you stand on those two legs of prayer and study, not like I'm a prayer person, I'm a word person. Mm -hmm. Either of them are unfortunate. I'm a person of prayer and study. When the enemy throws jab, you've been proved. Your spirit man has been set on fire already. You know what the word says concerning you. And there is danger in studying to preach. You must learn to study to live. Because you need to bring out out of the treasures, out of the abundance of what is in that spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? So it is very, very important. As I study God's word, I'm eating it for myself. I found your word. I eat them. I'm eating the scriptures. I'm, they are becoming a template for my life. So I cannot be sick, not because Bishop Oedipo said it, but because I found in scriptures. I found in scriptures that it will bless my food and bless my bread and bless my water and it will take sickness away from the midst of me. I found in scriptures. So when the devil is trying to push this, I can reject it. I can push it out because now I know the truth. The fact is that you may have a symptom, but the truth is that by stripes you have been healed. So when you eat the word, you differentiate between fact and truth. And it is by the truth that we live. Praise God. We pray and we study because this is our lifeline. This is our only lifeline. Don't forget that worship is a component of prayer. This is our lifeline. We've got to see no matter. Uh, uh, there have been instances where things were happening and it looks like the world was crashing. And I'll tell my wife, give me an hour. If the, if the enemy thinks he's bowing my head in pain, if I enter as a cat, I will come back roaring like a lion. And each time I come back with template, wisdom, knowing what to do, prayer is a sign of humility. That God, I recognize my own inability and I am, I am depending on you. I know I am not sufficient of myself. Prayer is the real proof of humility. You are not humble because you are bending now for everybody. You are humble when you recognize how weak you are and take on the strength of God in the place of prayer and study of the word. Praise God. That's our lifeline. 
we cannot survive. I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm so bored with what I'm saying. I it's like it it is my oxygen. I know I cannot survive another day without prayer. I cannot survive. Like things will happen that requires that sharpness that requires that being in tune. You have to be on time in in tune. Now, lastly, let me share this with you. If I if I send you a message on WhatsApp, now listen to this. You've been saying, "Oh God, I'm broke. I need help," and I send you a message. 8.04 p.m. West African time on WhatsApp. Please send me your account details. I want to send you 10 million naira. I send you that message on WhatsApp. And where were you? were praying. But you did not put on your notification or your internet subscription. You didn't own it. So you own your subscription after two weeks. And then you are now seeing a message I sent two weeks ago. And I said, I don't want to spend this money. I want to send to you urgently. You are seeing it after two weeks. Now, the possibility of it is very high that you have missed what belongs to you now it was yours but you were not online there are many instructions many strategies many wisdom many things god wants to give you you need to be online where when he says do this you can pick it immediately without that you will be getting it when the season is over and sometimes you begin to be offended. How come I'm not get because you were not online with God? The, and then the sons who were online, they picked it and they did it, and that was it. You've got to be online. You've got to be online. You have to understand. You have to be online. As he's saying it, you are picking it. The, voice, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, in the midst of revival, leave that place. Now go to so so and so place. Fasten yourself to the chariot of the Utopia and Eunuch. You've got to understand, if you are not online, you miss God many times over. You miss him many times over. As we pray, as we study, we are staying online where we can hear him. And I'm telling you, in ministry, many things are not strategies, they are instruction for those who are online. For those who are online. Sometimes you want to undertake projects, and as I'm praying, oh Lord, we need resources, this, 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 this. It just gives me a wisdom. Do it like this. Or an instruction. Do it like this. And you see it produces every time again and again. Praise God. Have you followed me? And I believe someone has learned something today. So how do you master commitment or consistency? Number one, build a routine. Build a routine. And to that I mean that you should have special time for the things you want to be committed to. Have time that everything around you respects that time and submit to that time. Are you following what I'm saying? Have specific time. Have specific time. And if you want to take it a step further, have duration. I'm going to do two hours. I'm going to do three hours. All right? Have duration. Have specific time. Number two, learn to equip yourself with boosters, woods that keeps the fire burning. Learn to surround yourself with boosters, different things that helps you burn effortlessly at the time you need to do those spiritual activities. Learn to have your environment already saturated. Number three, don't despise the gathering of brethren. A lot happens that rubs off on your spirit when you come to the midst of brethren. Particularly brethren that the point of your conversation is on spiritual activities. Not how many people are you gathering? What's the size of your church? No, no, no. How many hours do you pray? Why are you studying? Have you been able to do it? I love such conversation where you can talk to people and you are challenged practically. You've got to have company of people that challenge you. That you see and you are challenged. You've got to have that. Are you following what I'm saying now? So build routine. Have boosters. Mark, understand how to maximize the company of brethren. Understand it. Understand it. Then number three, understand it is beyond your feelings. Be disciplined. It is beyond your feelings. In fact... Understand that every day you don't feel like is an opportunity to break the siege. Every day you don't feel like praying and studying is an opportunity to enter mastery. So the day you don't feel like seen as an opportunity to enter mastery. If you can do it when you don't feel like, how much more the day you feel empowered? Are you seeing that now? I mean, if you can practicalize these things, I mean, having listened to this teaching, put it on replay. Put it on replay. Go listen to it again and say, what have I just heard? And as you are listening, you are praying. 
as you are listening, you are praying. Put your Bible where you can reach it. And I want to beg you, if you have gadgets like your tabs and all that with which you read the Bible, please try and ensure you put off your data. Ensure you put off your internet. Because as notifications are popping on, they will drag you out of God's presence. Ensure you put out your data so you can have attention, undivided attention to stay there. Praise God. Now, I want to believe someone has been really, really, really blessed um, this evening. I mean, I'm so excited I was able to drag you here, and I believe you've been so, so blessed. Um, tomorrow afternoon, um, tomorrow evening in church, I'm starting a new series, The Great Commission. The Great Commission. I mean, it's going to be an impactful series. I'm taking it tell you from, uh, right, reversing the mistakes of Joseph. Right? You need to join me. Early morning prayer, 6 a.m. And yes, that reminds me, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., all right, don't miss it for anything. Still on this same channel. But listen, if you are a minister that is connected online, if you are a minister that is connected online, and you are right here in the midst of this broadcast right now, in the midst of this broadcast right now, I want you to register for International School of Ministry. Register for International School of Ministry. Because you are online with me, I'm going to give you, all right, 20% discount. I want send a message to the number you will see on your screen. And request that you have been given 20% discount. And you must send the message now. Alright? For they will put the message, flame line will be on screen right away. Send a message, alright, to that number that I'm registering for International School of Ministry. We have seasoned theologians. My core assignment is to raise ministers. Alright? So you you do not want to miss this for anything. Alright, that's International School of Ministry 2023. Alright, a message will be online. Send a message. A number will be there. Send a message to that number and say, I, all right, I, I've been given 20% discount. And to register also, all right, the link will be sent to you. You can equally go to um, my Instagram, all right, and then click the link in my bio, all right, and then click the link in my bio. And yeah, register. All right, and then just reach out to the contact that you've been given 20% discount. I want you to register. I want to see you on board. I want to see you on board. International School of Ministry 2023. All right. And then lastly, from 7th of April till 9th of April, we are having our sons, daughters, mentees, and partners conference. Sons, daughters, mentees, and partners conference. Now, you do not want to miss it for anything. And the team for this year's conference is the Occupying Hami. That's the team. The Occupying Hami. The Occupying Hami. It's going to blow your mind. It's, it's, I mean, you will be launched into another. And people know I do not just call for meetings. Each time you will practically see God. You don't want to miss it for anything. And if you are within this country, Nigeria, you've got to set your time to live wherever you are and be on site try with everything you have within you it's easter period so be on site and for those who will be watching online all right you are going to be able to live stream by the grace of god all right um the occupying army if you have not bought my book um you need to go and buy it you've got to read that book Whoosh. the final move of god you've got to read that book all right, such an interesting time with you this evening. I want to say I love you so much. I'm so glad. Before you go, we're going to pray together. All right, like I said, there's going to be impartation. We're going to pray together. I'm so excited you could make out time to be a part of this, this amazing meeting. I want to really, you know, appreciate that you could make out time. And please subscribe on this YouTube channel and copy the link and share it on every group you belong to. I mean, this is one way to help that person, right? Share it on every group you belong to. After this, you know what you have heard. You know what has happened to you while listening. It was like fire burning in your heart. Copy it and bless somebody. To know it and hold back is, is not good. It's not a sign of walking in love. Copy it. If you will do so, write in the comment section, I will share this. I will share this. Copy it and share it with people on different group page of your people. Shante, please be blessed. Listen to what I've heard today. Listen to what I've heard. Share it with them. And help someone, help someone overcome the grip of the flesh today. Help someone master consistency today. Praise God. Now I'm praying for everyone who is under the sound of my voice. And well, before I do that, if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, I, I, I want to lead you to Jesus. 
I mean, if, you, if, if for one reason you stumbled on this and you have not given your life to Christ, I mean, you, you can't even do all the things you have de- we have described today if you are not first and foremost in Christ. That's where real life begins from. So if you are under the sound of my voice, please put your right hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came to this world to die for sinners of whom I'm chief. I know you were killed, uh, you died for my sins, and on the third day, you arose for my justification. I believe with my heart, and I'm confessing with my mouth that you are the Son of God. I accept that life that you have given to me. Amen. Now, if you have said that prayer, a big miracle has just happened, the greatest miracle by far. And I'd like for you to send a message to me. All right, that same number will be on your screen. Send a message to me. I want to personally help you. All right, I have materials that will help you and disciple you to grow. Praise God. Now, if you under the sound of my voice and you want me to pray with you, all right, reach out your hands. I'm agreeing with you today that every, every siege on your spiritual life, they are rebuked. From today, I decree that there is a fire burning in your heart towards prayer, towards study of God's word, towards fasting. A fire is burning. I rebuke every struggle. You will never have to struggle again in the name of Jesus. I decree that you are helped. I decree that you are strengthened. From today, fresh fire in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you. I can't wait to see you 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Prophetic prayer contact. God bless you. Send a message to us. God keep you in the name of Jesus. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I'm so glad you made it. Share the link. Don't forget to share the link and subscribe. Subscribe. This channel will bless you. Subscribe and share the link with everyone you know. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you.